Does this new movie justify Ant-Man as one of the best Avengers in the MCU? Let's go. So Scott Lang, also known as Ant-Man, played by the ageless Paul Rudd, is finally getting some recognition in these streets for the superhero that he is. He walks down the street, he gets his coffee every day, and you can tell fans kind of recognize who is that guy. He looks so familiar, because when you think about it, he did help save the world after all. But now with Scott Lang, he's kind of taking a back seat, thinking that the world no longer needs saving. This is all until he realizes there's a whole other active world with people and creatures, plus a ruler that has questionable ambitions. Him and his family look at this that his daughter created which allows him to communicate with this world known as the quantum realm which is a universe hidden from ours. Scott has actually been there before but nothing could get him ready for this new visit because as they're checking out this device they get forced down to the quantum realm through some type of malfunction. Now they have to find a escape to return to their normal reality but in their way also trying to escape is a ruthless brilliant supervillain known as King the Conqueror. Now for those that are new to the Marvel Cinematic Universe or that might need a refresher, King the Conqueror is pretty much the next big bad guy after Thanos. If you watch the first season of Loki on Disney Plus, then you might remember him appearing in the last episode for that series. Be sure to check out my spoiler free review for that series because that show actually does kick off the entire new saga known as the Multiverse Saga. Now, King the Conqueror is very similar to Thanos in regards to his very straightforward dominance, demeanor, and intentions. And both of these villains are great series villains, especially once you understand their backstories and the reasoning behind their purpose. What makes this character stick out is mainly due to the performance from the hottest actor right now everyone keeps talking about, Jonathan Majors. His acting is spot on being very serious and not making jokes like every other character in the MCU, especially in this movie. I mean, when I sit back and think about it, his performance was also somewhat disappointing because I actually wanted more screen time from him. That's how good he was in this movie. And I also wish in regards to his character that the character was portrayed a little stronger up to the final battle in the third act, since the previous hype was that he was the top dog and not to be messed with as the next villain. And if you happen to watch the mid credit scene and the end credit scene, then you probably got a better understanding of why this version of him probably wasn't the strongest version of him. I thought going into this movie, why I'm a little disappointed is because I thought Kang the Conqueror, that version of him, was definitely the strongest version of him out of all the other versions. Because now that we're diving into different universes and multiverse timelines, we see different versions of ourselves for better or worse. Now the CGI in this film is about 90% of the movie since they are in the quantum realm throughout the entire story. So I did expect it to be pretty good and that's what was shown. But now what's not good in my opinion, and this is very common with Marvel movies as of lately, at least it's been getting more and more common, has to be the childish plot outcomes, as in like the final outcome of the movie, the conclusion. But along with that, this is typical, the typical screenwriting in regards to every single character having to have like a one line punchline, a one line joke, except for Kang. Kang was the only character who was dead serious throughout the movie as a villain should be. But every other character besides that, it's just so many jokes going on and we've seen this before. And I just wish there was more drama in regards to this story specifically. Because the comedy is very similar to Thor Love and Thunder, although a movie as a whole is probably not as bad as that movie. Although now that I think about it, back to the screenwriting, it is lazy writing now that I think about it. Because if you watch both movies, Thor Love and Thunder, you had children. In this movie, we had ants. If you know what I'm talking about in the story, it's very similar to how those two kind of show up at the same time for the same purpose. And it's kind of lazy screenwriting when you think about it. But don't get me wrong, like I just said, this movie is definitely better than Thor Love and Thunder and also Internals, so <laughs> that's saying a lot. We, we kind of go in the right direction. I just feel like ever since Infinity War and Endgame, that Marvel needs to keep their foot on the gas when it comes to all these characters. Not to sound ruthless, but there are so many good characters at this point that I honestly think they could start killing them off. Kind of similar to Game of Thrones, not as drastic, but I think you get what I'm saying. But instead they continue to play it safe where in the end, at the end of the movie, a character dies, but it's not the main character, or it's not a main character related to the protagonist. But instead, like if you watch this one, I'm not gonna spoil it, you have this random new character and they kind of make it emotional yet funny, like you're supposed to care for this character. And I just wish it would have been somebody else to make the villain more impactful. I'm not saying there has to be deaths or losses to make the story interesting or captivating. However, when you promote the next villain of the MCU, King the Conqueror, as this intimidating guy, I just kind of wish there was a better ending to this movie or this new introduction for him. I'm probably just taking it personal because I am excited for Jonathan Majors and King the Conqueror, so I really hope the next time we see him that he instills more fear in the MCU since he's supposed to be stronger than Thanos, which is hard for me to believe since Thanos was that dude. I don't follow comics, so I am trusting that Kang will bring the heat. Am I the only one or does it feel like I'm actually almost rooting for the villains in the MCU at this point? Probably because Marvel screenwriting is just so damn lighthearted and predictable at this point and result freaking annoying. Speaking of annoying, before I conclude this review, 
Although I did appreciate the extended storyline and screen time between the father and daughter relationship between Scott and his daughter Cassie, played by Catherine Newton, I did find her character a little annoying and thought that her overall performance could have been a little better. For example, there was just like a scene with them running for their lives with all this chaos going on and like she had a smile on her face or a smirk on her face. I'm just saying when the environment is chaos and everything's falling apart like I just said, I want to see more from these actors, more seriousness. Now I know it's easier said than done because of CGI and the acting correlated to that, but you can see it as an audience member that it could be a little better when stuff like this is going on. A perfect example I think I mentioned in a review from the past is the Transformer movies, especially like the first one. The way my man Shia LaBeouf asked during that, he is freaking out, screaming, running for his life. That's what I need to see when it comes to something fake on set in regards to like a CGI performance. But I do like her as a casting choice and overall I think Marvel does a great job at casting. But I really hope Marvel could get better at their screenwriting such as reducing the jokes and increasing their cliffhangers similar to how they did it in the first three phases. Overall the movie absolutely served its purpose with King the Conqueror as the great introduction establishment for the audience as an important villain character for upcoming movies. Actor Jonathan Majors is also a major addition to the Marvel casting and I think as long as he keeps delivering great performances then overall the storyline should be fine. Some would say such as myself that his performance is what made this movie and obviously this movie is definitely no Captain America Winter Soldier and also not as bad as Ant-Man and the Wasp but also not as good as the first introduction movie of Ant-Man due to its simple plot and charismatic cast. Ant-Man did the best he could to do as an Avenger but everything outside of King the Conqueror was unforgettable. It's not right, but it's okay. gonna... Thank you Spider-Man! Did you get a chance to watch this new Marvel movie or are you one of the many or few, I don't know where we stand nowadays, that gave up on the MCU a long time ago. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, then please consider clicking the like button and also subscribing if you're new to the channel. This way you can stay updated with more fun reviews uploaded weekly. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all on the next one.